Hi friends, Diana here. So my goal on this is to always be teaching us some really easy, simple... My goal is to be just teaching us some simple, easy, gluten-free recipes to show you guys it's really not very hard once you get the hang of it. So I try to keep my things fairly simple, but I also kind of play with it and it depends on my mood what I feel like doing. So today, I'm going to do pot roast. Very simple, you know, a staple of most American childhood and easy. So, woohoo, let's try. Okay, first I got my big chunk of meat. I'm just gonna season li liberally, as they might say. Um, plenty of salt. The salt is really important. It helps with browning because it dries it out. And browning is good because browning means flavor. Fla fla flavor. Okay, um, and I'm gonna do some pepper. Good, so that's all I'm gonna do right now. So my, oh, I'm gonna do this in the Instapot because it's my new favorite thing and why not? So, what's so cool about the Instapot is you can saute on the bottom. Now, if you wanna do this in a crock pot, no problem. I would recommend browning on the stove and then just throwing it in your crock pot. Uh, four hours on high, six to eight hours on low, not an issue. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this in. Here's the sizzle, it's hot. And you're going to brown it for quite a while on both sides. Let me show ya. Mm. Yum. So, when you're going to brown a big chunk of meat, the trick is to let it stay until it unsticks. So if it's stuck, then it needs to brown up more because once it's brown and hardened it's no longer going to stick to the bottom and again we're not doing this to like keep in the moisture or whatever because i watched the alton brown video and that doesn't actually work but what it does do is flavor those brown bits are flavor and yumminess and that's what we want especially when you're doing something like the crock pot or instant pot you're kind of not going to get as much caramelization as you would just over the stove so this is a really important step if you care about that. Now a lot of people skip the browning step and don't always notice the difference. So if you want to skip it, skip it. I give you permission. What's going on? Okay, let's pull out my brain on the beef. So the trick is to actually not hurt yourself. And it's browned on all sides there. So I'm on a clean plate, I'm not putting it back on the yucky raw meat plate. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna put in about four cloves of garlic and about one large onion sliced. And then we're gonna kinda just start to soften these and brown these veggies. It's very hard. I've got a lot of brown flavor on the bottom here. But it's helping get up there. Ooh, onion. And then I'm going to add about a tablespoon of tomato paste. So this is not to make it taste tomatoey. This helps make that kind of savory flavor that you love. Ugh. But the trick with this is you have to cook it. You gotta cook it for at least five minutes or so to really cook it down. And when I say cook it, I mean like the sauteing direct heat. Once we start doing the slow cooker instant pot version of it, then you're gonna be getting, um, it's a different type of heat, right? So this is gonna really make a difference to be sauteing it, getting the flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and saute the onions and garlic here for just a couple minutes, but I'll let you zoom in. Ta-da! Don't they look beautiful? And you can see a little bit of the browns on the bottom, nothing to be afraid of. That will totally come off while we're cooking it. Okay, so that's been able to saute for a little while. Now, I'm gonna add a couple ingredients. And now remember, every time you add something, you do have to check that it's a gluten-free product. So it sneaks in. And a 
I'll show you on the biggest culprit that I have because I've got one in there that can be kind of one of those surprising unexpected culprits. But first I'm going to put, I guess it's brand new. Oh no! Okay, this is one of my favorite things to add to meat recipes, Worcestershire sauce. I can never pronounce it, but I can taste it and it's yummy. So you're going to put about two tablespoons. Um, so if you're not like, if you need to, please measure. Otherwise, I'm going to do kind of how you feel. About two tablespoons. Um, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to add in my beef broth. I'm putting in four cups of beef broth, which for this is two cans. And now here is one of my things for weak and high. This is crazy. I took a picture of this when I was in the store because I went to go grab an organic one. But you always gotta double check in there on the label, and I'll pop it up. There was wheat flour on there. So, organic. Okay. And this is my beef broth. You can use chicken broth. Like, it might have a slightly less beef taste, but it's gonna be fine. So, if that's what you have, use it. Keep it simple, keep it easy. Okay, next I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon. This is Dijon mustard, but um, my favorite is just like any kind of ground up mustard. And you, yeah, you don't want to add too much. You just want to add a little bit and you won't taste it. It'll just kind of be this background flavor. It's kind of like a bay leaf if you ever use that. Speaking of bay leaves, if I'm making anything with a broth, I get a couple bay leaves. Now, chicken stuff, poultry, you really have to have a lot of bay leaves. But I like to put it in here too. Okay, so I have all my stuff in here for my broth. Next, I'm going to put my meat back in. Okay, so I've added my meat back in. And now I'm going to add my veggies. And that's what's awesome about this, right? You get it all at once. So I'm going to add some potatoes. These are the golden kind because I feel like they get this creamy taste that I really like. So I'm going to go ahead and put those right into my liquid here. Just kind of fit them in wherever. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you can put your meat on top of them, behind them. I don't know. It all tends to work out just fine. So the potatoes are going to take they kind of need more time to cook. So I tend to put them in the bottom where they're in the liquid because things in the liquid are definitely going to cook faster. And then I'm going to put some carrots. I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just getting some baby carrots. Uh, if you have some great, you know, like whole carrots, you cut them up, they tend to have really good flavor. They're great. Um, but not today. Today I'm keeping it easy. So, and then I happen to have half a thing of mushrooms in my fridge, whole mushrooms. Um, I don't really want the sliced ones because it's going to cook for an hour or so and they'll just completely dissolve. But mushrooms are great for that meatiness, right? So they're going to add some good kind of taste there. Okay. So now that I have all my ingredients in my pot, I'm going to do a manual. So I'm going to put this on. Fun little noise. And I'm going to do manual. Oh yeah, I'm going to shut it off. Then I'm going to do manual. And so this is a small roast. I have a two pound roast. If you had a four pound to five pound, you're going to want to do over an hour, probably about an hour 20. Okay, well, I'm getting a bit, whoops. I took too long talking. Okay, manual. I don't, I just have a two pound. So I am going to go up, I'm going to do about 45, 50 minutes on mine. Okay. So and I got to make sure it's on sealing so that it will seal and not vent. Now, if you have your crock pot, again, four hours on high should about do it. It's ready to go. And then, or about six to eight on low. And then it should be good to go. So I'm really excited. We'll have to wait and see now. But, but this is the best part, right? Because I can go deal with whatever my kids are screaming about right now. And then come back to it later. And if you're not ready to eat right away, what I love about this is they keep warm. So I can get this done like when I have time and then just kind of let it keep warm for a while. 
depending how picky you are with your meat. Okay, everyone, I'm back. So it's been actually a couple hours since I had last filmed. We went out and took the kids to the park, and I came back a little bit late. So, you know, because life, it happens. This has actually been in here a little longer than I planned, but I think it's going to be okay. So I just released the pressure, and it's all gone out. I didn't do it on camera because it's really loud. So, do do do. Mm. So it smells fantastic. You know that nice meaty, homey kind of smell. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up. We got a few of these veggies. Oh, see, it's like the perfect doneness. I like mine so they're like falling apart like that. And we got some of these mushrooms. Of course, what we really care about is this beefy gold underneath, right? Okay, this looks perfect. Oh, look at that. It's just falling apart. It's just falling apart. And as you can see here, right here, it still has some of that brown. Because we browned it, it has that nice color on that. That's really good. It's really hot. You guys know I just want to some, some. Mm, really tender and it's got some good flavor mm. so I'll fix up a plate how I like to do it I like to have it all together and a nice piece of hearty bread of course gluten free definitely check out my video um, that I do with my gluten free bread which is simple and easy which is how I like it I totally forgot I gotta show you how to make the gravy because the best part. Yeah. So of course we do not use flour, we use cornstarch. Oh, I had it right here. I was ready for it and I forgot. So I'm gonna take everything out and I'm gonna throw in my cornstarch. I can even hit this little saute button, so I'm gonna be able to heat it up right here. Okay. So to thicken with cornstarch, the huge measuring cup, I don't need it, I just grabbed it. You want to mix your cornstarch into, forget most people like measurements, right? So probably about a, two teaspoons into cold water. No, I do a tablespoon because I've got a lot of gravy in there, so it depends. And what I do is I do a certain amount, I mix it in my cold water, then I'm going to add it to my hot stuff because it won't dissolve. If you put it right into hot, it'll just like get chunky thick. See? Nice and creamy. So I have this sauteing. Now ideally what would actually be good is if you let this cook off for a while it'll reduce. So you're basically getting a lot of the water out and keeping more flavor. Okay that's one way. And when you're making gravy you're going to hit it with salt and pepper of course too. So my stuff has come to boil and I'm going to just add my cornstarch mixture. What you kind of do because I have extra in there, I'm just going to... And then, you cut a piece of your meat. Now, when you're cutting meat, you always want to go against the grain, but this is just like shredded, so it ain't no big deal. I'll just kind of pull it out. I think I'd do that too. Then I'm going to do a bit of gravy on top. And this is still, probably could be a little thicker, but I like it juicy. Okay, and then I love a little bit of thyme on top. You could also do parsley or anything, or you could do nothing, you know? There you go. We got potatoes, meat, carrots, veggies, yum, yum, yum. Nice and simple, and then get your nice piece of thick bread to sit with it. You got yourself a meal. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day, friends.